Kylo. Uh, thank you, Alex. Hi. Hello, everyone. How, uh, hello, hello. How are you today? I'm a little tired, you know, staying at home, working in front of the computer. Uh, but no, no complaints. I'm, I'm all good to go. And today our topic would be a little, a little bit different, I would say, uh, because uh, we're going to do a little defense stuff combined with imagination. So creativity when it comes to defending and a few, a few positions where you actually have to attack, um, attack uh, creatively. Let's put it this way. All right. Uh, understood. Yeah. So for those who maybe have not checked out the, pre the previous lessons, uh, we were focusing on calculation, um, sort of uh, hardcore calculation uh, in the sense that um, uh, it's, it's advanced work. I'm an international master. And so the, the material is designed to try to help bridge the gap between inter international master strength play and, and grandmaster strength. And, uh, and of course, you work with a range of students, but um, you are sort of our our uh, our expert uh, advanced <laughs> coach. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> so let's uh, let's dive in then. Um, exactly. First, what have you got for me here in this first position? Uh, well, I don't have a very pleasant position for you, Alex. <laughs> There's a pawn on e6, the rook, the knight is hanging. You know, you do have two extra pawns, but it, I guess it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, it like has two extra pawns. So there are some challenges for black to face and address. What would you do? OK. Um, oof. <laughs> Yeah, attacking is always easier, isn't it? You just yeah. throw some piece forward, take something, give a check, and defending is tricky. I think I think we are uh, as a species are not wired for that. For uh, but not only wired, I would say like when you're a child, you study chess. They give you only tactics for a win, right? So your brain from the start in your chess career is trained to find a win. And and it's it's not really a good idea to teach a child to defend, right? Okay, occasionally just don't go to squares where you can be captured like that. But uh, taking it to the next level is usually very difficult. We're much more, we are much better at attacking than defending, whether it's for ourselves. And we are even worse in finding defensive ideas for our opponents. We can barely do it ourselves, but for the opponent, it's really hard. So it's, I would say it's an area for improvement for most chess players, but you have to be gentle with that. I think we discussed uh, previously uh, uh, issues with, with doing that is when you just do only defending stuff or positional stuff without any calculation or tactics, you get tilted into one way or the other. So um, previously I was giving you more attacking positions. Now we're going to do a little bit of defense. Uh, All right. That, that so which moves sense. come to mind? OK, so yeah, the context for me is, uh, as you were saying, uh, two, two extra pawns. But on the other hand, it's pretty nasty here. Queen takes g6 is one option, um, is, is, is one huge threat. And I think the big threat. And then, of course, uh, capturing this rook. Um, also a bit uh, painful, although at least if they capture the rook, I can take this bishop on e3 and, well, I started up two pawns, so that's something I should be open towards, um, maybe. But now I'm trying to figure out, I mean, some candidate moves are moves like rook f6, uh, defending against both threats. King g8 I would like to play, but the problem is pawn takes rook now comes with check. Knight f8. Is, a, is an interesting idea I'm considering. Uh, he, he can then take the rook on f7, I take the bishop on e3. Um, but the part that I don't so much like about knight f8 is my knight suddenly becomes a very passive piece. Um, uh -huh. So I'm not, I'm trying to find something a little bit better than that. Maybe 
you know, uh, a little bit more imaginative uh, as well. And, you know, I'm wondering, is there anything along the lines of rook af8, then he can take the knight on g6 and maybe some kind of rook f1 check and some way of distracting this rook on h5 so I could just grab the, the queen um, for free. But I'm not seeing any way to make any of that work for now. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. What else could I possibly Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering what do you do next? Like, uh, so here I'm guessing you went with the your intuitive best lines of your inbuilt engine, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem that you're happy with any of those moves, right? No, not too happy, no. All right, so what do you do next? <laughs> yeah, uh, what do I do next? Okay, probably I would start to sit to calculate knight f8 now. Okay. I feel like, uh, at least with knight f8, I'm defending, and I feel yeah. like I'm more or less forcing you to capture my rook or play bishop g5. Yep. If bishop g5, my intention would be rook f6. And then you could maintain the tension there somehow, maybe mm -hmm. with some kind of move. Ah, but if knight f8, bishop g5, I also have another candidate, which is rook f2 mm -hmm. uh, that I just saw. And, and I really like that because it, it feels as though you suddenly you don't have time. Um, time to play bishop g5 unless you want to go into the line bishop takes queen on e7 uh -huh. rook takes queen on c2 bishop takes d6 rook mm -hmm. takes c3 that's a very messy position uh your those pawns on e6 and d5 look so scary i'm not a huge fan of of going yeah. down that road yeah uh, mm. so knight f8 bishop g5 rook f6 and then Let's say you don't have a killer blow there. Maybe you have a move though, like King G two there. Um... Uh, let me hold on a second. Let me ask you this: that particular position, Knight F eight, uh, Bishop G five, Rook F six. Yeah. That is a very good point. Maybe you don't have a killer. So what if White doesn't have a killer? Well, how would you evaluate that position? Just nothing special. Just take the rook at some point. What is the evaluation? I still, think, Basically, I still think I'm struggling. Yes, you are. You're, well, exchange down for two pawns, I guess. But the pawn on g3 is, yeah, right? It's not really surviving. And the knight is bad. The pawn is on e6. Doesn't look promising, right? Yeah. So uh, it actually brings us to a question that I didn't expect that would rise. When do you stop calculation? And you just stop and you evaluate the position. I don't think, I don't think most of us, including myself, we don't have a like clear system there. We just go naturally, we calculate stuff and then we stop at some moment subconsciously, I guess. And then just that's it. I'm done. Right. So uh, how do you know in advance when to stop calculation and evaluate the position? Uh, of course, I don't have a definite answer to that, but maybe a good idea is mm, so if you are attacking and you get some material gains, right? Or if the position is quiet, so no more forcing moves really are, are available. I think that's the case in this position, let's say knight f8, should g5, rook f6. Well, white doesn't really have forcing moves except the capture, right? So you can just stop here. There's no more threats. Black doesn't have threats. White doesn't have threats. Maybe it's time to take a breath and look around. Once you do that, you would be like, oh no, I'm materially barely even. And well, my pieces are bad. So that's definitely a time to stop calculating saying, no, I'm not happy with this line. The same applies to rook f2. So you cannot stop here, right? <laughs> Queens are hanging. Material is, is, uh, is about to be lost. Queen can move with the bishop. Indeed, I think you stopped at a very good moment. Actually, yeah, rook c3, you stopped here and you said those pawns would crush me most likely and i think that's a fair point i don't know takes and push and push yeah. and it seems that they're just going and probably there are other ways to like do. The, so the back rank also 
Uh, exactly. Uh, also, also you can stop when when you don't have any forcing moves anymore, and your opponent does, and you don't like your position. That may be like a huge spoiler. <laughs> You're in that, trouble if you don't have threats. Your opponent does, and you don't like your position. So yeah. So we're. <laughs> That's actually really that's that's actually uh, you say that and that's actually this position after rook f6 is maybe the perfect example of that. Yeah. Uh, because I was just thinking initially I stopped calculation based on exactly what you what you were saying that you know the position is already so horrible, um, or or rather you stopped uh, you stopped calculation based on like the position is already so horrible even if there isn't a killer. And I, at first, was not assessing that the position was quite so bad. Uh, but then when you were saying this thing about forcing moves, here the white has the forcing move of bishop takes f6, and whereas black doesn't. And actually, mm -hmm. after bishop takes f6, queen takes rook f1 is sort of a good illustration of for the viewers yeah. of this yeah. these kind of uh, motifs. So I... I yeah. Just to... Ah, that's a good point. Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, so yes, if you don't have threats, your opponent does have threats, and you don't like your position, well, maybe you should find some other line, right? Yeah. Because very often we just, uh, I notice it in my calculation, very often I just keep going, even though it doesn't make sense. You know, I just keep going, the wheels are rolling, you know, I'm going, where am I going? Why am I going? I don't know. I'm just... Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> and sometimes you have to like say, hold on a second, just look at the position. It's just horrible. Come on, just find something else, right? The question is what? <laughs> yeah, and so here is the uh, part about imagination. Uh, I also... Uh, I think I didn't prepare exactly that position, but uh, very often when you're defending, so you don't have a candidate. Is that correct? Right now, um, no. Right. So what do you do if you look at the position and like everything is horrible? I noticed there's a pretty good system. If only a, you can apply it only in extraordinary situations, only when you're like, oh my God, I don't have a move, I'm about to lose. So only in those, you cannot use it all the time. That would be ridiculous. So let's let's try try this one here. So the position is bad. I, I, so sorry. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I suddenly have a move. I just wanted to let okay. you know. But if you want to continue, yes, I, just, I will. But yeah. regardless, if your move is correct, but go on. No, I just I, I wanted to let you know because suddenly it popped into my head an idea, and I wasn't sure if you would like me to say it before or or to or to or to not. okay let's say let's keep it a mystery for a second okay so uh when you're when anyone is in big trouble and you don't see a single move that that uh, that that leaves you in a good decent and at least an okay position so the thing to do is to clearly ask yourself what is the threat that's number one so assume it's white to move yeah. what is white going to do what is the threat Queen takes it's, g6. It's queen takes g6. It's not e takes f. e takes f, queen e3, you're, you're actually winning. <laughs> you're actually winning after that. King h1, queen f3. Let's say, let's go a6 for argument's sake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. The, the rook is lost and black is winning. Okay, same yeah. with king f1. And here, well, horrible, right? So it's not e takes f6, which is the threat. So what is the threat? It's queen g6, right? That's it. Resign. Yes. But there is another threat. Another, so you have to clearly state all the threats. It's not e takes f, it's actually bishop g5 is bishop. the threat. Yeah. Exactly, bishop g5. So these are the two, well, queen g6 is the killer one, bishop uh, g5 is, well, also killer, but not as killing as anyway. So <laughs> measuring the murder is very difficult, right? So, so these are the two threats, queen g6 and bishop g5. It looks horrible. So, and then uh, I am using method of elimination by literally considering all legal moves available. So again, this algorithm is good only in extraordinary situations where, where you just want to resign. <laughs> then you just do this, you know. I'm literally checking all moves, whether they can help with, uh, with, uh, with the threats. So obviously, a6, b6, a, this is ridiculous. h6 doesn't help. G2 doesn't help, right? Moving the pawns doesn't make sense. King G8, as you pointed out, was it comes with a check. So uh, moving this rook from A8 doesn't help with Queen G6 at all, right? 
So you have only queen, rook, and knight. You uh, indeed, moving the knight, you can move it only to f8. You consider this, you're not happy with this move. So that's it. It leaves only the rook and the queen. And the, with the rook, only rook f6. And we already are. Oh, have we considered? I think. Uh, I think. The problem is bishop g5. And yes, bishop g5. g5. Exactly. The pin and, well, what you're going to do. Except rook f2 that we. Hold on. When did we. Ah, rook f2, now queen g6. So it's knight f8 and rook f2 was the idea, right? So, uh, so only rook f6 could help. And it. Well, not so good, right? So now you have only the queen. Which move can possibly help with queen g6? It's queen f6, but then the whole rook is hanging, right? Mm, so yeah. Not good. And by method of elimination, you, you can conclude that queen e8 is the one. Yeah. Any other move with the queen, either the rook is hanging or the knight is hanging. And with this weird looking backward move, you can like e takes f, now you win. Thank you. Uh, queen g6, you say, oh, that's a queen. Thank you. That's actually not the end of variation. But, uh, but th that's the way you just very often naturally move queen e8 doesn't come to anyone's mind. Right? You have to be quite desperate to see a move like that. Would you agree? Yeah. And, and, and I think it was exactly that process. It was sheer just desperation and frustration. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly queen finally you see some hidden resource which is very nice yeah this geometrical resource is very cute um so nice yeah queen e8 queen e8 that is actually well uh once you consider it at least you can say at least i handled the queen g6 and e takes f the game continues right so it's not the end of the game it's not like you survived and you won or anything no but the, uh, the, the problem was even considering a move like that, right? So uh, actually, this line needs to be continued. Yeah. Because, so. well, white has like this forcing move, this forcing move, and maybe, I don't know, protecting the bishop could count as a forcing move, right, to threaten the rook. But then you just move the rook. So I don't know, rook e1, you can move the rook somewhere so the game continues right no no big deal of course it doesn't look very pleasant for, from black point of view but the game definitely continues so the queen g6 must be considered rook f1 rook f1 queen g6 even without the queen white is still pressing here yeah e7, e7. Right? exactly yeah and then you how do you survive with rook f8 queen e8 loses the piece right rook f8 yeah so what do you do I think rook g8. Yeah, rook g8 would, would be a move that saves the game. That's true. But actually, white has such a good position. Let me check my analysis. It's like this. What do you do? Yeah, I wanted Honest to go. Still. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wanted to go queen e8, but rook f7, and I'm paralyzed. Yeah. That's exactly the point. Apparently, you can hold this one, but this doesn't look very promising, right? So you maybe you run out of moves at some point. That's not. By the way, this is something that even engines may fail. The fact that you can run out of moves. So this doesn't look promising. What else can you do? So the one possible resource is like h6 and then mm -hmm. if he gives me the check i go king h7 if he takes my rook i can take mm -hmm. on h5 and uh, potentially some queen h2 stuff uh now maybe i can also mm -hmm. go queen b1 check mm -hmm. should be considered then queen b1 checking g2 queen e4 check it feels that's like exactly there should the be a point. perpetual yeah that's exactly here here and here where does the king go? Cannot go to f1. It's queen f3, check, check, and take on e7. Oh, yeah. Where do you go? Suddenly white is in trouble. You know, king has to go to h3, h3. And black can, I don't know, maybe some checks. Or you can just take the pawn and argue you have many pawns. Your pieces are just around the, the, the board, not coordinated. So that's exactly the idea. That's exactly the idea. And that is the correct one. Uh, Actually, okay, this is advanced calculation. So uh, here, white has an amazing move rook to e5 first. Wow. Yeah, so it's like beyond our understanding. And after takes, takes, the best black can do is a perpetual. Queen b1, uh, 
queen b1, queen e4, check, that's a perpetual. So the pawn is about to promote, black has only perpetual, uh, because the e-file got closed. <laughs> Just the rook is lost, but the pawn is alive. So that was that's actually the equality. Apparently, the rook g8 is also equal, but it, I, I'm not convinced, by the way. I'm not convinced. Black should go h6. Actually, you do have a plan here. h6, king h7, king g6. Doesn't look that bad. But then rook f8, the rook is lost. So the, if the bishop is protected, maybe you cannot go. So, but obviously, it looks quite obvious that white is playing for a win in this position, right? Yeah. Bishop can come to d6. You know, that looks okay. It cannot come because rook is hanging. But oh, like bishop takes d6 yeah. could be. I don't know. There are so many things white can do. Uh, it uh, looks dangerous. But the point I was trying to make was to how to even consider move queen to e8. That's difficult. You have to be quite desperate to see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Unless you have any questions. Uh, no, no questions. By the way, I, I will just make a comment for anybody sure. in the chat. These are uh, interactive lessons, meaning that if you, if, if you guys have any questions for, uh, for uh, today's For coach, any of us. Uh, Yes, so also for if you want to hear the perspective of the suffering student, then, <laughs> uh, then feel free to ask. Um, but, uh, but yeah, any questions for, for, for either of us, uh, in particular, Mihailo, uh, feel free. And, uh, and now on to, on to the next one, yes? Exactly, exactly. This one is really, really hard, I would say. So the previous one was not very hard. First of all, spoiler for, for our viewers. <laughs> the first one was, okay, although it, it depends. Sometimes uh, sometimes you can get the right idea in a second, and that would be it. And sometimes you can sit there for half an hour and still not figure out what what is going on. So, okay, I'll give you a minute to figure out what is what the heck is going on here. Right? So the queen is hanging like, G, like what is going on? Just look for a minute. Everybody look at the position. Yeah, this is like, it feels something like, you know, a position maybe someone like Alekhine might be at home uh, <laughs> in it. But uh, this is tough because there's so much tension on the board. Exactly. Tension is a very good word. Uh, actually, yes, when to stop the calculation when there's not too much tension. If there's lots of tension, lots of pieces attacking each other, uh, usually the consequence of that is variety of forcing moves then uh, then it is uh, it is uh, you should continue but if the tension is very low or non-existent it's definitely time to stop and just evaluate the position and move on with to some other line or maybe just finish the calculation there's a question is it leech's tactics no it's not it is from uh, um practical chess defense old book about def defense that I studied many years ago, and then I just selected the positions that like really influenced me the most. I don't know, you can search the database, I guess, for this position. I didn't prepare who was playing that, although that would be a good good point to, to tell maybe there are some strong players playing. Anyway, why to move? What is going on? So just material is uh equal except um black is up a pawn mm -hmm. and um the uh, big... do you know i'm sorry alex do you know this joke about master natsakanyan no no <laughs> um i think it's like old soviet chess story i i don't uh, remember exact grandmasters that were involved but if I remember correctly, definitely Botvinnik was there. So there's like a group of strong, really strong top level class world GMs analyzing some position. And they cannot get to the bottom of it. So one side has extra pawn, another one has really good compensation. The position is very messy and unclear. And then comes master, last name Natsakanyan. He's, he's only famous for this <laughs> event, I would say. And so they, uh, maybe jokingly or not, they ask his opinion about the position. And he looks at the position for a few seconds and says, like, in this case, black has a pawn up. And <laughs> so there's a joke, like, according to Master Natsakanyan, black has a one pawn up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yes, black is one pawn up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, bishop takes g6 at first sight. Okay, the main, main threat for black, I'm just going to talk about my, my thoughts. Sure, sure. Is rook takes g2. Uh, check and then we cannot take the rook because uh, queen takes his mate so king f1 and that position feels like you know very very scary but I, I have to say I, I'm not seeing the immediate like if it was black to play on the next move uh, what is the immediate blow there um, mm -hmm. feels like there should be a I mean it should be lost because now material is equal uh, but on the other hand, I'm not certain. So that, that makes me wonder about the move bishop takes g6. Um, because bishop takes g6, I'm winning a, a material if he takes back, because I play queen takes queen, bishop takes... Ah, no, I do not. Bishop takes, rook takes, and rook e1 is mate in the end. So bishop takes g6, and he can take me. And even there, maybe I don't actually have a move. So that suddenly bishop takes g6 is not very attractive to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, rook takes g6. By the way, for the record, for the record for our viewers, if she takes the queen, there's mate. Yeah. Just, just for the <laughs> The queen is not hanging, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh... Hmm. So that is actually a proper... I think the first moves you should... Uh, let's say, don't even ask what is the threat. I think the, the first thing to do is to, what can I do? You should be like, I want to attack, I want to win, right? So captures and checks. That's what rook takes the mate, we just discussed, if bishop takes, uh, indeed it's pawn takes, and if queen takes, it's bishop takes, and you cannot take because the mate is not, it's still there. And you can actually stop here, because, uh, well, you can continue with rook g6, but uh, black is pawn up, black is attacking, the rook is here, the bishop is here. You can stop here and evaluate it. Whoa, I'm in trouble here, right? So um, so that's the move number one to consider, is bishop g6 and rook d5. Uh, there's a message in chat about queen h7. It doesn't really help with rook e1. Uh, threat, I would say, so maybe takes check and takes the rook, but then rook on d1 is hanging, so it doesn't seem to work. Uh, I would say this more or less, con okay, there are so many. Actually, it can qualify, like h3 can qualify it as a forcing move, right? Because then the queen is hanging. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to get lost in this position, so I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, I mean, for me, maybe h3... Yeah, h3 could be interesting, but rook takes g2, king f1, and maybe even rook takes g3. Yeah, and, for example, yeah. Or queen takes d1, and then rook takes g3 looks painful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So what do you do? Okay, h3 is not the move you want to play, you know. It gives, like, um, passes the advantage to your opponent, g2 is hanging. So what, uh, let's, so let's come back to the, so it's actually a defense position so there's no attacking stuff because black is the one attacking g2 is hanging back rank problem um so what is the threat i agree with you that rook takes g2 king f1 there doesn't seem to be an obvious way to continue because the queen now is hanging right so let's say for argument's sake let's just play a nonsensical move a4 right rook takes g2 king f1 it's not convincing the queen is actually under attack there's no good place to go. Check, you just take. Check, you just take. You know, so indeed there's no easy win. So maybe, maybe rook g2 is not a threat. Is there a bigger threat? Uh, so maybe just note it. Rook g2 is not a big deal. Okay, it's not killing me for sure, at least. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that can just crush me right there? Yeah, the the back rank uh, rook mm -hmm. one. So maybe queen d4 check yeah can hurt a lot because i cannot take and if i go king here one of the things i'm worried about is g2 and h5 Some exactly some kind of rook takes g2 rook takes takes and takes four yeah four looks like i'm going to yeah actually this is the biggest threat and i think there are plenty of wins here for black but now uh, the queen is not hanging so black can do whatever okay black cannot move the next queen f2 for example yeah. probably probably is a win you know here rookie one g2 is hanging yeah. i think that's it 
that is it. So actually, queen d4 is a threat. Rook g2 looks dangerous, but it doesn't look like a killer. Queen d4 is the threat. So what can you do about that? And let's say noted that rook g2 looks quite dangerous, although depending what you do, it can change. Like h3, you pointed out that h3 uh, could be too slow. Yeah, at first I considered the move knight e3, but the problem I think is just you just take it. Um, yeah. And I'm not seeing a, a point there. Hmm. There's a message message in chat about my d6 move. Did it cross your mind? Yeah, but I think you can take the knight. So yeah, I think so too. It just takes or or check is still the problem, actually. Yeah. Yeah, or or yeah, to check. Uh, the move I'm looking at at the moment is um, some kind of. Bishop? No, not bishop. Um, what was the? <laughs> now I've 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 forgotten what I was looking at. Um, I can, okay. I cannot move my rook. Uh, I can take on g six, but it. Don't know if it achieves anything. You just take it. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I have anything there. I cannot. I, I have to stay protecting g two. Yeah, my bishop. And D1, yeah. Mm -hmm. My bishop, I could only move to G4 without losing the queen or with check. But if I go here, the problem is you're going to take me. Very good. Yeah. Uh, and then when I take back, rookie one is made. If I do something mm -hmm. like bishop C2, it doesn't really uh, help. Yeah. I, I lose my queen, so I feel like I can't move my bishop. Knight E3, yeah. as I say, felt like rook takes. Yes. Uh, knight D6, queen takes. So it feels like knight bishop struggling to move to find pieces uh, to move maybe sorry maybe my queen somehow but uh -huh. where do i go with the queen uh, queen g4 or something like this uh, feels very uninspiring you know ha huh. interesting i uh, actually you have you have good intuition i would say because queen g4 <clears throat> does help with the g2 square and does help with the queen d4 check right but indeed, it doesn't look too inspiring. You're not even creating a threat, you know. You're just unpinning and protecting and only waiting, like, where's the punch coming from, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, is, this intuition is developed as a result of receiving a lot of punches, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to develop it, yeah. <laughs> it's just like... Yeah, it's it just feels so you're so you're saying this move isn't it's not cutting. It's it. actually a decent try. I don't know. You sort of want to capture. You don't really threaten much. That uh, that is the problem. You give black opportunity uh, to to and well, the punch is just so brilliant. So uh, I just want you to find it. I I don't know. It's so difficult. I just try it. So the queen is balancing d1, g2, and d4. Usually that's not a stable place for a queen. Yeah. Just all diagonals, horizontal, vertical, all the lines crossing that particular square. I mean, the first move that, that would come to mind is just put that rook on double up. And, and the point is that you cannot take my queen because I still have, you know, I have this checkmate. And you, mm -hmm. you can take this rook, though. Yeah. Then I, after I take, take, take... It seems like you're okay after after rook e2 taking taking it so that's uh... yeah actually yes rook to e2 e2 looks very promising and logical you attack the rook on d1 which cannot take right but indeed the line goes like this takes 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 and at least white is ending up in an end game one pawn down yeah maybe maybe i can take the pawn back of course black is better here bishop rook but it uh, looks like white can survive here or at least the game continues but there's a killer move here. Mm -hmm. Black to move, and surprisingly, it ruins the whole, the whole just fragile balance. Yes, that's the one. That is the one. It's just away from the king. You just throw a pawn to h5, and you ask this. So your queen is not under attack, but this one is. And so to to illustrate how big was queen d4 threat, we are ready to go here. You know, we lost the h7 pawn. Knight is 
completely lost and now queen d4 uh, wins after king h1 for example queen f2 the the fact that there is no pawn on h7 black doesn't bother black too much h5 is the killer move here and uh, the queen has to protect the rook i don't even know how to continue it's just it just looks resignable so yes queen g4 is uninspiring but uh, uh, it's really hard to spot h5 move for black so that would be a good try from practical point mm. of view but that's not the one so i'm guessing you were using the method of elimination you said i cannot really move the knight so there was a suggestion knight is three in the chat but i think we discussed this one i think i can just take right yeah you still cannot take the queen you cannot take and the knight is lost and black continues the attack okay queen d4 is not a threat anymore but that's not a big consolation i would say or rook g2 would be really dangerous so no knight e3 is not working so you were using the method of elimination that was good you said i cannot move the knight you check this you check this moving the bishop no moving the queen maybe to g4 indeed where else can, we, can you go the rook needs to be protected right so moving the rook to g3 so i think you you tried moving all these four pieces and concluded that there is no success there. You still have more pieces? Not so many more. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm starting to run out. Uh, I would, I mean, I. The thing is, uh, you know, I cannot move this rook to, let's say, to f1 or something that would just yeah. kill me because I would rob this square. Rook e1 is not an option. A move like rook c1 achieves nothing, uh, so it feels like I cannot lift this rook because of rook e1. So unless I'm missing something, I feel like this rook cannot be moved, the knight cannot be yeah. moved, the bishop, the queen, the rook. I mean, it almost leaves. You're not missing anything. anything. You're not missing anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the the by sheer brute force, <laughs> king f1. Yeah. <laughs> yes, king f1 is the one here. So. It's so, I mean, like, have you ever seen in the middle of a king side attack with queens and pieces hanging, the king just goes to the center and just walks into the F1 square and says, your move now, sir. Crazy. Uh, yes. There was a question in chat about bishop g6. I think bishop g6 is the second best try. And the problem is after h takes, uh, cannot take with the queen, and you cannot take with the rook because g2 is hanging so queen d5 bishop d5 big advantage for black king f1 the problem with this move it is almost impossible to consider it naturally like it doesn't come naturally and i, I understand because in 99 percent of cases that's a ridiculous move and that's why our brain says don't even look that way that's stupid you know i've seen so many examples where it's wrong i'm not gonna even look that so you have to like manually force yourself Okay, yeah. why is it advantage? Big advantage. The end game in the end game, uh, it's uh, well, the uh, black has extra pawn. As simple as that. So king f one. So why is it a good move? It takes away the the threat of queen d four with check. Yes, and, and it takes the away the e one square. Now the queen is hanging. Now now look at black's position. What do you do? The queen is hanging now. Um, there are not so many good squares. Uh huh. Suddenly, black is having trouble finding move. Right? The queen is hanging. I cannot, um, cannot move the knight as black yes. because this rook hangs. Yes. I look at some queen takes g2, rook takes, bishop takes, king here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm not seeing a follow up there. Um, That's true. You you wish to have a knight someplace, but it's yeah you cannot move. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and maybe there is some other sacrificial idea like some crazy rookie one but it doesn't seem to work you can just take it yeah uh so then in terms of queen moves if i'm not seeing 
I mean, I also have idea like rook a1, just mm -hmm. after rook takes, is there some loss of stability for white with that rook on a1? Can I exploit somehow? But I'm not seeing any follow up there. Uh, by the way, by the way, coming back to original position, I think rook a1 is also a big threat here, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. It could be. Like, it is so weird that king on f1 is less vulnerable than on g1. It's usually you want to go to the corner, and here you walk towards the center and say, I'm better placed here, no queen d4, no rook a1, no checks, nothing. Yeah. So the queen is hanging. What do you do? So quieter moves for with the queen are queen f7, queen c6. Those are the only squares that I see, like the natural squares. Um, yeah. But I don't like either of them. If queen c6, <laughs> I feel like maybe even some bishop d7 there could could be quite dangerous. Yeah. I don't know how we... Yeah. S maybe queen e4, however, saves the day because bishop takes, queen f4 check would be a... I know, queen f4... No, queen, yeah, queen f4, it's a mess. But I think... Yeah. Rook f3, it feels, it's very messy. Uh, yeah. I guess some queen c6 stuff I would explore a bit further. Queen f7, knight d6 uh, feels bishop a6 check, king g1, uh -huh. queen e7. Uh -huh. Queen e7, knight takes e8. Oof. Today you woke up in a cruel mood. Uh <laughs> Today... <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll give you this. The the uh, the point of this exercise was to even consider King F one, and to show that suddenly now Black is in trouble. It looked completely the opposite, uh, right? It looked like White has no moves, right? You manually checked all the moves, and it seems that all of them are bad except Bishop G six, just to a horrible ending. Mm. So actually, now Black is in trouble. Queen c6, I think it's the first of all, there's bishop g6 and queen takes. I'm not sure how you're going to handle that. So I take. You still have no checks, right? Yeah. And I take. Mate is coming. You cannot use your queen and you cannot use your rook. I think that's it. Right? Am I missing anything? I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Ouch. That's just it. <laughs> That's just it. Uh, maybe bishop b7 also win, but I think this is the most straightforward one. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven, rook d8. So it's not queen c6, it's actually queen f7, the only move. And now white can try knight d6. You did notice bishop a6, but there was a follow up. As you, I remember every time you, you, uh, we were calculating, you asked whether I can create a bigger or equal threat. So, not so the first intention shouldn't be run away, right? You always were saying, uh, if I remember correctly, can I create a bigger or equal threat? I remember that's a good question to ask yourself, even if your queen is hanging, except if you're under check, right? So you, you have to move away. But otherwise, the first should be, can I aggression? The first should be, I want to attack too. I don't want to run away. I want to attack too. Can I ask you on, actually on that point? Uh, sure. Your opinion. Um, do you feel that when, like, so for, for viewers, I, I'm, I'm also a, a coach, but I tend to work with less advanced students. Um, so this question doesn't come up so much for me, but I'm curious, uh, I'm curious for yourself. Um, I find some students, they have a tendency to be overly aggressive in terms of some people, some students, their default is that they find the, the, the hyperactive moves at all times, even when something a little bit more def defensive or cautious is is in order and then there are other uh, students who they are um tilted towards the defensive uh, you know so suddenly they are playing too cautiously too passively too defensively when the position actually demands more aggression uh do you feel that this is mainly um this like being either over aggressive or over cautious do you think that has to do with people's character or do you think it has more to do with how how good their chess education is? You know, how well they've been taught the classical idea that you should, as you just told me, you should first look for the threat before you look for defense. And do, do you know, maybe I'm, I hope I've made my question clear. Hmm. Whether maybe. it has to do with the, 
personality or education? That's yeah. your question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say more with the personality, but also it depends on the first coaches that you had and the books uh, that that you studied, right? And if I if I had to choose, I would definitely choose aggression for for a very even. It's better to attack even when it's not justified because it is much harder to defend. Like Mikhail Tal, he was always hyper aggressive, sacrificing. Half of his combinations were, were full of flaws, and yet he was a world champion, right? So, and um, attack is better than defense. Even objectively not good attack is sometimes quite good from practical point of view. But as I guess with everything, you have to keep the balance. But I would say, uh, the first thing should be aggression. So for those two passive, like manually force him to attack first. That is a much better habit than the, the opposite. Also, none of them are perfect. Uh, keeping the balance is good. By, by default, it is better to attack first. And then if you do, all active attacking moves are for some reason not working, you should be like, okay, I have to go passive now. So you have to be like self-aware of what is going on. But it does have a lot to do with the personality, for example. Uh, and it is way better to be aggressive. Um, uh, did I tell you the story about how I played next to Jan Nepomneschi in one tournament? He was sitting next to me. We were playing. I don't think I did. No, no. Because it has... Okay, it's not entirely your question, but it's very close to it. Um, we are sitting, I'm playing Yakovenko, and he's playing um, Grandmaster, I forgot his last name, from, from Armenia. At 2550, his opponent is, and my opponent is Yakovenko, and Jan's sitting next to me. So he was not top-level Grandmaster like he is now, that was uh, European Championship 2013 or something. Mm, 2012, yeah. So, and I, I see his position and I see my position. And I see that he blunders. He blundered a piece for, for two pawns. He didn't see unusual tactics. He, with white, against much, he was like 2700 approximately. His opponent is 2550. He's white in, uh, for those whom you are not familiar, European Championship is a tournament with more than 100 grandmasters. Top 23 usually qualified to the World Cup. Huge money involved. Lots on stakes, you know, you qualify to World Cup. That's a big deal. And so every half a point is at stake. He blunders. I see, you know, I'm, I'm a professor. I can see when the person blunders. And then, and then he blundered. And then he keeps on playing quickly and confidently. And I'm like, and his opponent is sitting like this. His face is red. He's calculating. He's confused, you know. You blundered. Why are you so confident, you know? Why you should be like this and angry and pissed and, uh, and sad. And instead, he just, doom, 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 let's go. And he just crushed him. You can, um, maybe I'll show this game sometime in the future. And I was like, I, again, I was looking at Jan, fully confident, sitting like this, you know, just, yeah, come on. He just blundered. And his opponent is, and I'm like, I look at them, it's clear who blundered. <laughs> from from face expressions that's not Jan when I look at the position no he's lost and I'm like I'm so confused and his his speed his confidence he just outplayed his opponent and he won and went on to share the first prize in the tournament I think he I think Moisenko won it and then in the last round he won and no sorry he won he we had same number of points I didn't qualify anywhere before the last round he was one point ahead of everyone <laughs> After this game that he won after a blunder, he went on to win a few games in a row and he lost the final game and then still shared the first place with 8 out of 11 or something. So like this overconfidence is amazing, even if it's unjustified, <laughs> because it's so hard to, uh, to feel that pressure from your opponent. So that's, those are my thoughts about, about it's better to be over aggressive. It's better to be balanced, but my uh, yeah, that's those are my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it's I hadn't heard that story before, but it doesn't surprise me, of course, <laughs> that uh, Jan. I mean, he's I think anybody who knows he's a, he's such a a beast when it comes to calculating and his time management. He's almost like the opposite of Grishuk. Uh, <laughs> he 
<laughs> Grishuk will go for perfection in terms of actual play, but Jan, yeah. he goes for and, and risks the time situation, but Jan just goes for... I mean, I actually played Jan at the Olympiad, the, the previous Olympiad, uh, ah. Ireland versus Russia, and I can assure you it was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> <laughs> and he he just, he, yeah, he crushed me, but he also crushed me on the clock. And, uh, and, and but one thing though, afterwards we were uh, analyzing the game and by analyzing the game, I mean, he was talking to me about the game while I was listening and, and trying to keep up. And, uh, <laughs> and one thing that just amazed me about, about Jan, both, both there in our encounter and in the analysis and also in other situations is how incredible his, it's almost like his processing speed is, how <laughs> fast he he can tear through these variations um that feels to me like raw processing speed is that is that something you attribute mainly to talent or do you think it's just solving so many more puzzles as a kid or something do you do you know anything about what what yan did what's his secret sauce uh, definitely part of it is a talent but mostly it's a it's not like you're born with it and you don't have to do anything. You just sit and relax and the processes are going so fast. No, it's a skill that he trains it on a regular basis. I'm guessing every day you train, you train, you train. The calculation is a skill. There's part of it is talent, you know, creativity, you know, thinking outside of the box. You can, it comes with talent, comes with the books you study. But uh, it's not about knowledge. It's not about knowing how to calculate. It's about as you say, raw processing speed, raw calculation. And that takes practice. That's like running, you know? That's like running. If you don't run, you cannot run marathon. You have to run every day, and then you can do the marathon well. It's not like you, I know how to run. I know how it works. This leg goes here, that leg goes here. No, it's purely the skill that you have to train. And I'm guessing he invests lots, uh, uh, lots of time and energy into maintaining that high top speed uh, engine of his you know yeah that, yeah. that, that makes sense that makes sense uh, i i wonder if that's what jan would say uh is exactly his or if he would ever i don't know if he's ever publicly said what his secret sauce is but uh but it makes sense and i actually i know if uh i won't mention him just in case it was told to me privately but i know of one uh, grandmaster who is two six uh, 50 plus who says mm -hmm. that actually tactics was his weakest point and calculation was his weakest point. And one time, just in out of sheer frustration, he said, OK, I'm done with being weak at this area. I'm going to spend two hours every day solving really difficult puzzles. And he did that really for over a year. And he said by and? the end of the process, that calculation was his strongest, uh, his strongest area of his game. So it's never too late, apparently. Yeah. Well, he was about fifteen when he did this. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's too late. Then. Okay. <laughs> but I think it's never too late because uh, some some students of mine have had this same uh, have done something like this, and uh, one of the ones that comes to mind is he went from one thousand five hundred bullet to or, or like two thousand bullet. And he attributes it mostly to just uh, solving lots of exercises and eventually mm -hmm. his speed went up. But mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you my painful experience. Uh, all, all the years I was so studying chess, every day I would do one hour of, uh, of tactics calculation. Every single day I worked on chess, where, whether it's one hour or five hours or whatever the number is. Every day I was doing calculation. My calculation was over the top. And I could compensate for other areas that I didn't study so much, for example, openings compared to my level. And in recent years, due to coaching and uh, other activities I'm involved, my calculation, I can feel it that it's dropped. I feel it. I can, I can take it back. If I do every day, I do at least one hour of decent uh, calculation. Some, some simple and then some very hard. Not if you just do very hard ones. You will do, it's not really helping with the speed, I would say. So it's important to train speed and precision. And with speed, you need simpler positions. With precision, well, you need this kind of stuff that we're doing right now. So, but it's a skill, you train it. And if you don't train it, that's like a muscle. It's just, just gone if you don't train, right? 
you can be a full uh, in very good shape but you stop uh, stop working out and you eat lots of unhealthy food and your shape is gone right so the same with calculation it's not the same with end game knowledge or understanding right understanding or knowledge is like i wake you up at 3 a.m you still know uh, some rook end games right you may it take you a minute but you wouldn't be able to calculate well right so because that's a skill and that's a knowledge right so uh, that's there's, there's a big difference and i do agree that mostly it's uh, by hard everyday work even even if you don't have a tournament coming up it's really hard to restore that form so f for me it takes usually weeks before before I have a tournament, so let's say I didn't work on my calculation, I have a tournament. It takes me weeks to to come to some sort of form that I used to have. So yes, that's that is the answer. <laughs> Three a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a skill. It is a skill, and actually, I would say this is maybe the most important skill in chess. Maybe the most important one. You can just out calculate your opponent. Uh, even if you get bad position out of the opening, even if you don't know, uh, even if you don't know stuff, you can calculate your way uh, through uh, through it. Of course, you have to have the guidelines. You know, you have to have general understanding. But mostly, it's a skill that that you train. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, that's my my experience as a player resonates with a, a, exactly what you've said that. Uh, when especially the last part that you said about how calculation um, is is maybe the most important thing, I find it so unpleasant when I face uh, like a strong grandmaster who I know for a fact calculates much better than I do. It's such, so unpleasant. It's much more unpleasant than when I face a strong grandmaster with a better opening repertoire. Because if I face <laughs> a guy with a better opening repertoire, I'm like, okay, either I'll get crushed. Or if I survive, I'm in the mix. Uh, but with calculation, I feel I can't relax at any point uh, because they'll use it against me in the opening, in the middle game, and in the end game. Uh, yes, exactly. You need it all the way through till the very end. Yeah. Till the very end, you need it. Okay, let's... Uh, okay, not this one, not this one. Let's just conclude with a funny example. Like this, we're maybe five, ten more minutes, right? And that would be... That would conclude best move for black in this position. Best move for black. Mm -hmm. Okay, so material is level. And I'm wondering what is white's threat? It looks to me like rookie eight. Then uh, I have to take because otherwise I get mated on H8. And then after knight takes, there's a double threat, and I don't see a response against that. Mm -hmm. If I yeah. do something like knight b7, the problem is exactly that line, and I and I get crushed. Uh, I can do, however, a move like knight c6, potentially. That hits the queen, so he can go rook e8 anyway. Rook takes, knight takes, knight takes d4, knight takes c7, knight e2 check, and take on c3. Looks good to me. Uh... But after knight c6, he might have a move like queen f6. Then I, I cannot take the knight with my rook because of rook e8. And if I take with my queen, then still rook e8 uh, is the problem. Uh, with If I move my king, then I get mated. And if I take, then I lose my queen on d6. Uh, and I think that's a lost position. So knight c6, queen f6. I'm not seeing uh, the problem then. You're threatening rook e7 as well as rook e8. And I, I don't see a solution against those threats maybe there is maybe there's some rook f8 or something like this but even that then rook e7 feels or knight no not knight takes f7 but i would like to find something a bit less um passive mm -hmm. than that uh knight c4 is an option just to to simplify um knight c4 then he goes let's say i rook e8 takes knight takes and then we have the same problem except there i have queen e5 and if queen takes c4 then i can take on e8 if he goes knight f6 check before i go king g7 it seems okay so knight c4 is interesting if i just want to survive uh 
Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that I see a problem with knight c4. I'm looking. Um, hmm. Knight c4. I'm not seeing any problem. Okay, do I have anything better than that? Uh, That's a good question. So, by the way, if you uh, you found a draw and you're certain that you have a quality, try looking for more. That's a good point. Queen c6 is very interesting uh -huh. because I covered the e8 square. Yeah. And then after that, what would be maybe queen f6 then doesn't work because rook takes knight on d6 and then the e8 square is covered. So after queen c6, maybe you have some resource, for example, knight f5 ideas, then, or knight f5. So queen, because my rook is no longer defended, so I'm thinking maybe knight yeah. f5 with a double threat. Then if you yeah. take on d4, I can go knight e7 check, king moves, then I take the knight. You're not in time to take back, but you can move the rook somewhere. That feels kind of equal-ish. Feels like okay. there should be... I don't know if that one's slightly better, but after then better for black than the other version. So after queen c6, knight f5, rook takes d4, knight e7, maybe I can do king f8, knight takes c6. Mm -hmm. Like rook, yeah, rook c, rook a4, rook a4, mm -hmm. knight takes a7, rook takes a3. It feels, I mean, it's definitely better for black. Mm -hmm. to my to my eyes but i don't know if it's enough to to win just, okay just better um let me see what other options maybe some king move to step sidestep the checks uh, so king h7 for example okay uh, king h7 and then my threat now would be to take this this knight because no rook e8 and but you would have once again knight e8 and after knight e8, rook takes d4, knight takes c7. I'm not seeing anything too impressive there mm -hmm. either. Okay. Finally, knight b3 hits the queen. Knight b3, but he can do something like queen d5, and I feel like my knight is hit. And uh, I know queen d5, rook takes d6. Rook e8, check, king h7. Queen takes b3 or something like that. And mm -hmm. am I anywhere near Mihaly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're calculating a lot, and that's the way the, I I think I would do the same. I don't remember what I was calculating when I was solving this one. Uh, definitely queen c6, knight c4, knight b3, knight c6. Well, first of all, for our viewers, rook d6, rook e8, that's a mate, right? On h8. Mm -hmm. A very typical one, if queen takes d6, it's rook e8. Check, distracting, and white is close to winning. And if king moves, it's queen h8 mate. So the knight is, for now, cannot be captured. But obviously, there's a pin, and black tries to uh, to do something about that. And so queen c6 is indeed a very good try, stopping rook e8. And, uh, and the knight is hanging. But indeed, there's a tricky move, knight f5, rook is hanging. 97, it's all correct. Black is slightly better there, but nothing special. So uh, my question would be the following one. So if you had to pick one move from the ones that you have already considered, which seems to be the best? I mean, the most maybe the most harmonious would be something like knight c6, something like that. But or knight b7 has some appeal because of um, defending the rook on d8. But yeah, I mean, uh, isn't knight b7 the problem you you started oh, yeah. with? Isn't yes. this the yes? So okay. um, uh, which which line gives you at least a drop? That's my question. Uh huh. For sure, knight c6. Because okay. rook e8 takes, takes, knight takes d4, and I scoop up this pawn on c3 in that okay. variation. Okay. Uh, How does white survive after knight c6? I had said, 
Ah, no, sorry. The problem there was queen f6. Sorry, no. Exactly. That, that was up. the problem, yes. I forgot my, my own problem. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I'm not sure how to proceed. Okay, there. so uh, I, would, I would say like this. You've calculated many lines. In some of them, you had a risk-free advantage, but you want more. Uh, look around on move one. Sometimes that's a good idea. Like in previous one, King F1 was not in top five or even top seven moves to consider, right? Look around right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had considered King H7 as well, but I felt like Knight E8 was the problem there. Um... I think you, you said Rook E8, no? Or maybe that was my thought. Rookie eight is still the problem. Oh, rookie eight is yeah, is, yeah. The, is the problem. So hmm. there are moves like queen c five as well, but it feels somehow uninspiring. Uh huh. Um, you can actually attack and defend at the same time here, which is quite unusual. So, like in one line, so you're attacking and then you forget that white has a threat, rook e8, right? That's the threat. Rook e8 is like the only threat white has. Rook e8 check and then g7 mate. So, you have to address that threat while creating your own threat. How can you do it? Well, queen c6 was the move that you tried, but knight f5 seems to save the day. What else can you do? I could do queen d7, but my, my issue with queen d7 is I don't know what I'm actually threatening. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You can, still cannot take the knight. Um, queen... Ah, maybe I can go queen b8, uh, which would protect my back rank here and allow me after queen f6 to take. Uh, queen b8 maybe is... Am I, am yep. I wrong, Mikhailov? Yes, yes, that is the one. Uh. Again, this is a move that is in the blind area, like King F1 previously. It's like, why on earth would I play a move like that? You know, I want to go forward, Queen C6, Queen D7, Knight goes in. And sometimes you have to take down a notch and handle Rook E8 threat and attack the Knight. The queen is far away, no forks, Knight, Rook D6 is now the threat. What can White do? Well, Rook D1 loses to Knight B7, deadly pin. And that's it. That's all you have to see. Yes, okay, queen f6, rook d6. Yes, that's the one. That's it. You just have to consider this move. That's why I, I love this puzzle. Just there are so many lines to consider, but since we don't look around very often, we miss uh, brilliancy, which is right there. Queen d8, yeah. Very and it's nice. not like, uh, it's not difficult once you see it, once you consider it. And yet it's really difficult because you don't, no one considers moves like that. Never. Like why? You know? Usually queen from b7 goes to from b8 to c7. And here, here it's the opposite direction. The book was called Practical Chess Defense, but I, I'm not sure if that is from that book, but because this is not really defending, this is like crushing it and black has a drawing in the pocket. But yeah, queen b8 was the win. So that was, that's why I called it imagination and, uh, and uh, defending, defending and imagination. So the creative defense and very often it leads to a win. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice, uh, really nice example. Um, it's, it's like actively fighting this conditioning that we yeah. have. Yeah. yeah, we have these biases in our in our heads, you know, preconditions, you know, we assume things, <laughs> whether it's about people or pieces, you know, <laughs> it's good to be aware that, oh, my God, I have this bias, you know, although, again, it's not very good to always consider moves like that. You're not stockfish, you know, you don't have that capacity to consider all the moves, right? Uh, so somehow finding the balance or maybe usually just use the default setting, but when you feel like your default is not going anywhere just look around a little bit look around uh, if you do it all the time your your speed would would drop significantly but when you feel like oh my god i there should be something here sometimes moves like that could could jump to your imagination is it from a real game a question from twitch i don't know i have to check it i i said they're usually the in the books all the the positions are taken 
from the games or from variations from the games. So I guess the answer is yes. Okay, I guess that that would be the end of the lesson. I, uh, do you have any question, Alex? Questions? Uh, no, no. I mean, um, thank you, thank you very much for for the lesson. I feel um... you feel bad about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to start a calculation regimen a ASAP. I mean, every day from now on, you will see me 6 a.m. till 12, just uh, live on stream, just six hours of hardcore solving, and then we'll we'll meet again. You know, six months or a year from now, and we'll I'll be back. I'll be ready. Um, maybe I'll I'll buy this book that you mentioned, and then I'll have studied memorized all the solutions. You know, and get my revenge. <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, it's it's really nice. I appreciate this stuff um, to do because it's it's quite eye opening as well to, um, you know, to 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 see. I mean, when let's say you have a position like this one uh, with the queen b eight, and you know you miss this in a in a, an over the board game, it's very easy to have the computer show you queen b eight and be yeah. like minus a million, and then you're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. But here you realize actually it's it's not it's not that you're so silly. It's just that uh, it's difficult. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, and it's yeah, something. Yeah, because our trainer. brain knows our brain knows that in ninety nine percent of cases that's not a good move. So why bother? Well, sometimes you have to bother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That for sure. It, maybe that example, the the H five uh, example here with after queen g four. Was, uh -huh. uh, was was one of those examples of sometimes you have to bother as well I felt uh, <laughs> that stood st stuck with me from the lesson it's like h5 it's like you don't want to you don't want to your brain doesn't even want to consider it yes yeah? so that's interesting um, yeah it's it's not natural come on h5 what are you crazy <laughs> yeah okay Thank you very much, uh, Mihailo. Thank you, Alex, too. Thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, people people enjoyed it, um, and some people followed along, uh, which was which is which is great. And um, I guess we will be back uh, at some point, perhaps next week. Right? Yes. Yes. Stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel to get notifications. Yes, and also. Um, for those who are maybe unsure what the uh, uh, where Mihailo uh, coaches, it's on this. Um, the name of the Twitch channel is Coaches, and it's as you can see on on to the right hand of the screen. It's Coaches.com. It's a platform that will be live very very soon, but you can already register for the waitlist. So yeah, so go ahead and register. <laughs> That's uh, that's it from us, and um, have a good Thank day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.